ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم all praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his countless blessings and mercy be upon the prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam imam hasan rahimahullah he said that when a person commits these forms of act like fornication theft or consumption of liquor he says iman is taken out of him and he stays the iman stays beside him and it is as long as he is in a state of fornication in a state of theft or in a state of intoxication so iman is out of him and when he returns from that particular action then iman is iman returns back but again ulama say that here iman refers to we cannot say when a person makes a theft he is to be a muslim then he becomes murtad we do not say ahlu sunnah wal jamaa we do not say that if a person consumes liquor then he becomes murtad or if a person fornicates and this fornication just pushes him out of the fold of islam all what we believe is that that the perfection of iman cannot be achieved by such people how can we expect from a fornicator that he will achieve the perfection of iman while crossing the limits of allah subhanahu wa taala how can we think about a person who crosses the limits of allah subhanahu wa taala and clearly says allah subhanahu wa taala clearly says innama al khamru wal maisir wal azlam wal ansab min amali shaitan rijsun min amali shaitan fajtanibu so khamr is is of the acts of satan it's rijs it is impure fajtanibu you stay away from it and a person crosses the limits and still believes that that he will achieve the perfection of him and how come and from here mu'tazila mu'tazila they develop their doctrine of al-manzil to bain al-manzilatain and this doctrine is about when a person when the believer commits a major sin fornication is a major sin theft is a major sin and consumption of wine is a major sin there is no doubt about it on the basis of this hadith they have misunderstood the the the, the exact meaning of the hadith because the what we do it is not just one single hadith we focus on we fix the hadith into the whole broader spectrum of islamic teachings then its meanings are apparent or sometimes the apparent words are misleading that's why we need to see the whole context or simply we can say the hadith any hadith has to be fixed or has to be fitted into the broader spectrum of islam or islamic teachings and then it gives the exact meanings other hadith are also supporting they also clarify the meanings which are ambiguous to us and there is a well disciplined knowledge for this discipline of knowledge for this so mu'tazila they say on the basis of the hadith if a person commits the major sin he ceases to be a muslim but he ceases to be a mu'min now he he when he ceases but at the same breath they don't say that he is kafir he ceases to be a muslim doesn't doesn't mean it doesn't necessitate a person to be a kafir rather he is in between the two stages in between two levels one is level of iman second is down to iman is level of kufr but they say above the kufr and down the iman there is another level which they call as al manzilatu bain al manzilatain a degree between the two degrees a level between the two levels or a stage between the two stages that's what they call as al manzilatu bain al manzilatain they say he ceases to be a muslim but not necessarily becomes kafir but he is between the two but our firm belief uh, the all different shades of ahlu sunnah wal jamaa different schools of ahlu sunnah wal jamaa believe that here the iman refers to the perfection of iman 
not the absolute iman, not the exact iman. And uh, oh, there is another hadith, Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, لا يبنو من لا يأمن جاره بوائقه If a person لا يبنو من لا يأمن جاره A person does not have the faith if his neighbor is not protected from his mischief. So if a person is mischievous to the neighbors, what hadith says, لا يؤمن, he doesn't possess the iman. If a person happens to be evil, happens to be evil or happens to be mischievous, he commits mischief against his neighbors. Any form of mischief. But can we say that he says to be a Muslim, he becomes murtad? No, the لا يؤمن refers to لا يؤمن ولا يتحقق كمال الإيمان That person doesn't achieve the perfection of Iman. So he's deprived of the he is deprived of the Kamalul Iman. He is deprived of the perfection of the Iman. However, uh, the ulama there's a difference of opinion among the ulama. If a person commits the major sin, can we call him as mu'min or he's 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 called as mu'min naqisul iman? And uh, one of the opinion is that if a person commits major sins, he should be called as Muslim. We cannot say he is kafir. We, do, we don't say like the Mu'tazila that he is fil manzila tibayn al manzila tain. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, there are also two opinions reported from Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. As far as the minor sins are concerned, there is almost agreement of ulama. There is consensus of scholars that commission of minor sins doesn't remove the name of mu'min or muslim from a person yes we can say mu'min naqisul iman his iman is deficient his iman is not his iman is weaker not much stronger and uh, the iman decreases as per the commission of the sins as we believe that al iman yazidu wa yanqus yazidu bil ta'ah wa yanqusu bil ma'siyah Iman increases and it also decreases. Yazidu bi ta'ah. It increases according to the nature of the good amal. Wayankus. Wayankusu bil ma'asiyah. And it, is, it decreases according to the nature of the bad deeds. So when a person performs good deeds, it increases the iman of a person. When a person performs bad deeds, it decreases the iman of a person. So inflation and deflation of iman depends upon the nature of the actions nature of the amal if the amal happen to be good it increases the iman if amal or actions happen to be bad it decreases the iman uh, if a person performs major sins and he is regarded as uh, mu'min naqisul iman he is mu'min but his iman is deficient his iman is weaker and imam sayyidina jabir ibn abdullah radiallahu anhu abdullah ibn mubarak uh, Ishaq, Abu Ubaid and others they hold the opinion that he is still called as Mu'min but Naqisul Iman his Iman is deficient his Iman is not stronger and uh, Imam Muhammad bin Nasr al-Marwazi rahimahullah he narrates that that Imam Ahmad rahimahullah somebody asked Imam Ahmad rahimahullah Ahmad ibn Hanbal about the, somebody asked Imam Ahmad rahimahullah about the prophetic hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith which, which, which we discussed before la yazni azani hina yazni wa huwa mu'min when a person fornicates he ceases to be a mu'min means his, his perfection of iman is taken away from him so somebody asked him about it and he said man al arba'ah whoever performs these actions like theft fornication or uh, the third one was consumption of liquor or the the actions equal to it for Muslim the person asked him uh, should I call him as Muslim or we call him as Mu'min and then Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah he said that he is Mu'min Naqisul Iman he is mu'min, naqisul iman, 
means his iman is deficient. That is a preponderant opinion. That is the majority opinion that uh, even if a person commits a major sins, he is still a movement, he is still a believer, but his iman is deficient. And Sayyidina Ibn Abbas عنهما, he beautifully explains the nature of this hadith. He says, Azani yun min hunurul iman. When a person fornicates, the nur of iman is taken out of him. Not the exact iman is taken out of him. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah anhu, he says, Yunza'u minhu al-Iman. Iman is taken out of him. Fayakunu fawkuhu kadhullah. Now, Iman is like, like a shade. Like a shade above him. Fayadha taaba a'ada ilay. When he repents before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iman returns back to his seat. And the seat of Iman is in the heart. And uh, this is all actually uh, an indication towards the al-iman al-mawjood and al-iman al-matloob. So it doesn't negate the al it doesn't negate al-iman al-mawjood. It doesn't nullify the absolute iman. However, what it nullifies is the perfection of iman. <laughs> so what we learn out of this hadith is that that it is wajib upon a person to love for his brothers and sisters what he loves for himself and the sign in it is a sign of his perfection of iman and if a person is deprived of this particular characteristic he is deprived of the perfection of iman and one of the hadith also says that prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam said to sayyidina abu hurairah radhiyallahu anhu ahibba lin nas ma tuhibbu li nafsik takun muslima O Abu Hurairah, you love for the people. And here the hadith says, An-Nas, means one and all. No stratification. Ahibba nas You love for the people, ma tuhibbu li nafsik, what you love for yourself. Takun muslima, will be a true Muslim. So the true nature of Islam can be achieved only when you love for others, what you love for yourself. And Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, is also reported on the authority of Sayyidina Mu'az radiallahu anhu that Sayyidina Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu asked Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the top level of Iman annahu sa'ala al-nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an afdal al-Iman that he Sayyidina Mu'az radiallahu anhu asked Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the top level of Iman about the excellence of Iman then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied أفضل الإيمان أن تحب لله وتبغض لله. The top level of iman, the excellence of iman, lies in when you love only for the sake of Allah, you hate only for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Your love and hatred is only for Allah, not for your own self. But تعب لسانك في ذكر الله. And your tongue is involved in the ذكر of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. قال وماذا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and what else? What else, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, An tuhibba lin nas, ma tuhibba lin nafsik. That you love for the people what you love for yourself. But takrahu lahum ma takrahu lin nafsik. And you dislike for them what you dislike for yourself. Ma an taqula khaira. And you always say good. Aw tasmut or lapse into silence. Observe silence. If you don't find the situation that you can say a truth or you can say the good, then at least observe silence. So this is the afdalul iman. This is the top level of iman. And uh, another hadith also says that that Sayyiduna Yazid ibn Asad al-Qasri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, he qala li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me Atuhibbul Jannah Do you love paradise? Do you love Jannah? Qultu na'am I said yes ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Of course Qal Fa'ahibba li akhika ma tuhibbu li nafsik If you truly want the Jannah If you truly want the paradise And here actually Al Jannah refers to Maratibul Jannah High levels of High ranks of the Jannah and Qultu, I said, 
Naam, of course, I, I, I love. Qal, then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, فَأَحِبَّ لِأَخِيكَ مَا تُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِكَ So you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Means, you give preference to your brothers and sisters. Your devotion, your activism should be, should to bring out ease to your brothers and sisters. And if a person really bring, brings this ease to the believers, that's one of the best deeds in Islam. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is reported to have said, the hadith is on the authority of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu anhuma. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ahabba an yuzahzaha an yuzahzaha an yannar wa yudkhala al-jannata fal tudrik muniyyatuhu wa huwa yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir wa yati ila al-nas al-ladhi yuhibu an yuta ilayhi Whoever wishes to be saved from the Jahannam, to be saved from the hellfire. Bayyudukhal al Jannah, whoever wishes to enter the Jannah, protected from Jahannam and given entry to Jannah, fal tudri kumuniyatuhu, wa huwa yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. So he, he should meet his death that he believes in Allah and in the last day. And wa yati lan nas alladhi yuhib an yuta ilayhi. He should treat the people the way he wish people to treat him as. So he should behave with the people as he wishes the people should behave with him. Means everybody wishes that he should be treated in a, in a, in a well and proper manner. So he should also treat other people in a well and proper manner. It's not that we, I demand from the people to respect me, but on my part I don't respect them. I demand from the people to be, to be more to show more manners to me and on my part I don't show any manners to them. So that's what Prophet wasallam, that you treat the people the way you wish them to treat you. So if you have these, if you achieve this thing, Iman Billah and Iman in the Akhirah and then you have this quality, then Prophet wasallam, that will help you to be saved from the hellfire. That will help you to be protected from the Jahannam. And actually there is also a verse in the Qur'an, almost with the same wording. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ Whoever is protected of the Jahannam. وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ And is given entry to Jannah. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسِ He got the success. He got the salvation. The true salvation is when you are protected from the punishment of the Jahannam. The true salvation is when we are given entry to the Jannah. That's the true salvation. Faqad faz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He got the success. And this hadith is telling us the way, the key to achieve that particular stage that we are protected from the Jahannam and we are given entry to the Jannah. And that is that when we face our death, our Iman should be of the nature. One of the Persian couplets says, نِغَاهِ مَرْدِ مُؤْمِنْ بَاتُ غُوَيَمْ چُو مَرْدْ آيَدْ تَبَسُّمْ بَرْ لَبِي اُوسْتْ Let me tell you the sign of a true believer. نِشَانِ مَرْدِ مُؤْمِنْ In Persian language, نِشَانِ مَرْدِ مُؤْمِنْ means the sign of a true believer. نِشَانِ مَرْدِ مُؤْمِنْ بَاتُ غُوَيَمْ Let me tell you the sign, the true sign, the sign of a true believer. چُو مَرْغْ آيَدْ When death approaches to him. He welcomes the death with a smiling face. This true believer welcomes the death with a, with a smiling face. Why? Because he knows that death is not an end to the life. It is a beginning of our real life. An ending everlasting life. And now he is going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is going to meet Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one of the hadith, Prophet Shalallahu al mumin Death is a gift to a believer. And another hadith, another hadith says, al mautu jisrun. Death is like the bridge which connects a person from this world to another world. So, nishani mardi mumin ba tu goyim chu marga ayat tabasum bar labi ust. 
the true believer receives the death, welcomes the death with a smiling face. And the hadith is telling us, if you want to be saved from the Jahannam, if you want to seek the protection from Jahannam and enter into Jannah, then a person should face his death while having faith in Allah and in the hereafter. And then in dunya, he must treat the people the way he wants to be treated by the people. He should behave with the people as he wants to be behaved by the people. That's how he can achieve this level of perfection of Iman. Otherwise, he will not be blessed with the perfection of Iman. So perfection of Iman is subservient to this. And uh, Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave nasiha to Sayyiduna Abu Dhar al-Giffari radiallahu anhu. Abu Dhar, we know, he is known for his zuhd. Faqr Abu Dhar, the faqr of Abu Dhar is known, is famous. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Sahaba with the number of worldly blessings, he did not adopt any of them. Rather, he went to a far off place which was known as Rabza. There he died in a state of loneliness. So Rasulullah was knowing his nature and gave nasiha to him and he says, Sayyidina Abu Zar says, Qala li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, Ya Abu Dhar, O Abu Dhar, inni araka da'ifa. I find you, you are weak. Weak not in terms of health. Weak not in terms of iman. Weak in terms of handling the affairs of dunya. Because his tendency was towards more devotion and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. So he was, he was having a kind of repulsive approach towards the affairs of the world. Then Prophet said to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we can also see from this hadith, Prophet, Prophet's deep love for Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. He said, Inni araka da'ifa, I find you that you are weak in handling the affairs of dunya, to handle the bridle of this dunya. That's why he did not accept to be the governor or to be the to 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 to, to accept any higher administrative post. Sayyidina Abu Dhar never accepted any higher, any administrative post. Otherwise he was offered many a times to be the governor of many places. Every time he declined the offer. And as Prophet had Sallallahu Ta'ala advised him, Inni Araka Daifa, I find you that you are weak in handling the affairs of the people. Wayni Ahibbulakama Ahibbul Nafsi. I love for you what I love love for myself. I wish for you what I wish for myself. Prophet is saying to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La Ta'amma Ranna Alathnain. If you are given the choice to be the Amir of only two people, don't accept that Imara. Don't, don't, don't accept that leadership. And never accept to be the in charge of wealth of the orphan. Don't be the patron of the orphan's wealth. And Sayyidina Abu Dhar he was prohibited by Prophet ﷺ because of his tendency. Otherwise, we can see how Prophet ﷺ successfully handled all the affairs of life. What Prophet said, Inni uhibbu lakama uhibbu li nafsi, I wish for you what I wish for myself, doesn't necessarily mean that Prophet ﷺ did not uh, wish, to be, wish to handle the affairs of the life. It means that there should be no tendency in the heart to be the leader of the people. Yes, if you serve the people and you, you, a person by chance or there is a situation that a person is made leader or a person is having the capability, then he offers his own services to that particular field. That's highly appreciated as we find in the case of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, that's far off from our imagination that he could have t tendency to get the reins of the hukuma, the, the reins of the government. Definitely not. With a noble and pure heart, Sayyidina Yusuf he offered 
Ij'alni ala khaza'inil ard. He offered himself to be the, uh, we can simply say now, uh, Minister of Resource Management. Ministry of Resources. Every country has a resources, natural resources. And Sayyiduna Yusuf salam offered to be the minister of that particular field because he was having expertise in it. So if a person is having expertise in a particular field and he should offer his services, but there should be no tendency in the heart to be the leader of the people, to celebrate the leadership of the people, which gives way to the arrogance and other, other negative traits. Rather, there should be sincerity on the part of a person that he, he, that he wants to serve the people at his best or at, at her best in that particular field without having any lust for power, without, ha without ha having any lust for possession, position and possession. Then that, uh, that particular skill also becomes a source of and a form of ibadah for a person. So Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam prohibited him because Sayyidina Abu Dhar on his part was reluctant. He was not having any such tendency. So we can simply say that he was and this also happens in a society we have different types of people. We cannot have people of same nature. Nature varies from person to person. And this we also find such people in a society that they are Truly, ab truly absorbed into the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After supporting their family, after discharging their obligations of the family, they, 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 they prefer to perform more ibadah. But they are also the people, after they are free from the duties of the family, the responsibilities of the family, they, they want to spend their time to help the people more. So they, they, they start the social activism or the political activism or any form of activism. The objective is to ease out the sufferings of the people, to bring, to bring peace and happiness to the people. And if this is the intention, that social activism, political activism or any form of activism becomes a form of ibadah. And that becomes a source of achieving the, high, the perfection of iman, the higher level of iman. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us how to manage the affairs of dunya, how to manage the affairs of deen. At both the levels, successfully Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed to the world how both the things can be brought together under the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Michael Hart, when he wrote the book The Hundred and he placed it Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the top most influential personality all across the history on the surface of the planet. Then he mentions a reason why he chose Prophet Muhammad to be on the top of the list. The reason he gives that he successfully managed the secular and the religious affairs of dunya, of the world. Otherwise we can see the religious personalities like the Gautam Buddha, he encouraged the people to leave the dunya. He could not face at the storm of the worldly affairs. So he, he thought better to leave the dunya and, and like the, 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 the god, different gods, mythological gods of Hinduism, Rama, Krishna, they all left this dunya. Sayyidina Rasulullah did not leave dunya. Rather, he changed the course of dunya, the flow of dunya. He changed the course of the history. The reason given by Michael Hart is that he could successfully manage the affairs of the world and or he could successfully manage the secular affairs as well as the religious affairs. Actually, in Islam, there is no secular and religious divide. Since Michael Hart he is a production of the West, so he was brought up, his mind orientation is on these lines. They divide there's, there is always this uh, firm division between secular and the religious life. So that's why he used these words, that he could successfully manage the secular and the religious affairs because of his own mindset, because of his own world view. However, in Islam, there is no such distinction. There, the, there is dis distinction only in terms of wajib, mustahab, mubah. Makru and haram, that is a classification of all our actions. 
that determines what is uh, what is religious and what is secular in our modern day parlance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the perfection of Iman, with the perfection of uh, belief that will bring that will take us to the higher stations of Jannah. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. Jazakumullah khairah. Subhanallah bihamdihi. Subhanakallah bihamdik. Ashadu la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhanu rabbik wa rabbil izzati amma isifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.